Zapier continues to add new functionality to its AI bot builder called Zapier Central. In this video, we're going to cover Zapier Central's brand new Chrome extension and what that means for adding additional context to the power of your AI bots. Hi, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours get automated through industry-leading tools. Okay, let's get you caught up to speed on what has been happening with Zapier and OpenAI this year. OpenAI has ChatGPT. They then gave you the functionality to be able to create your own custom GPTs, your own sets of instructions, your own actions that can be done essentially in its own self-contained environment. From there, they started adding integration partners and Zapier's like, hey guys, we connect to 6,000 different apps. And that's how that relationship was born because you can now use Zapier AI actions from your own custom GPTs. But then Zapier took this relationship a step further with their chatbots product. And this is kind of the inverse relationship of what you can do with custom GPTs. So this is its own interface. Zapier has its interfaces. And one of those interfaces is a chat product. And in there, it's using chat GPT in the background, but this has the added advantage that you could put this on your website and people who interact with that chatbot don't need to pay for individual licenses to ChatGPT. Well, then we go even a step further and Zapier creates its own product called Zapier Central, which is essentially the ability to create your own AI bots on their platform. We've covered this more in depth in a couple other videos, but essentially you can create your own internal tools where your AI bots can help you in your own productivity. And that essentially leads us to today where now we have a new Chrome extension available for Zapier Central. Now, it's important to note that there's already a Zapier Chrome extension available, and this is not the same one. So make sure that when you're installing the Chrome extension, right now there's not a lot of ratings. There's only six ratings, but Zapier Central is the one that you're looking for, not just Zapier. Now, here's why the Chrome extension is a big deal. So in the past, we had our data sources, and we could connect to things like Airtable and Notion to be able to ask questions about the data that we had. And then we have instant actions where we can tap into really simple actions these are going to be just our standard integrations that we have available from Zapier. The most powerful functionality has been around these behaviors, which essentially are the instructions that we can pair with the different actions to be able to do more complex activities inside of our bots. But the power of the Chrome extension is that it can take the context of the website that you're actually on. And when you open it up, it can now take information about that website to use it in conjunction with all of its other AI features. Now, some of these actions come out of the box. And while they're helpful, it's not really anything that's special aside from what you can do in ChatGPT today. So I can click on these instant actions and I have the ability to do a visual analysis. If I have an image on the screen, I can translate something from text on the screen and it can summarize text as well. But again, the real beauty is taking what's on the screen and then connecting it into the vast ecosystem of Zapier integrations that are available. Okay, so for me, I work in marketing. So I'm going to try to create a bot that is focused on helping me with my YouTube research. Now I'll tell you right off the bat that there's a ton of bugs in Zapier Central. I say that not to scare you away from using the technology, but just know that if you're using this, you're an early adopter that people are starting to test out the platform. If you're an early adopter, there's a Slack channel that you can access and have direct access to the Zapier Central team, which I found really useful. Okay, so the first behavior I wanted to create was one to upsert the YouTube channel. So when I'm researching different YouTube content I wanna create, I'm looking at other creators, some are competitors, some I'm just simply inspired by. And I want to be able to save their YouTube channel somewhere aside from just subscribing to it because then I don't get quite as much information about that channel itself. So I've created a base inside of Airtable called YouTube videos and one table is going to be for the different channels and another is going to be for the specific videos themselves that we're going to save. And that's the context of what I'm working on here so an upsert, if you're not familiar with that terminology, is basically just logic to say, hey, if this thing doesn't exist, let's create it. Or if it does exist, let's update it. And that makes a lot of sense for these YouTube channels, because if I don't already have that record, then I want to create it. Or if I happen to be on that YouTube channel page again and they've updated some information, then I want that to update in my database. An upsert is an action that we have available to us in Airtable. However, this did not work. It simply errored out. It said, you are missing a required field. And this is a confirmed bug from the Zapier team. You basically can't fill out this missing yet required field. So I wasn't able to do an upsert. That's okay. Instead, for now, I'm just going to create a new one. Maybe we do an update later on in the process. So I created a new behavior here called create YouTube channel. Now, this behavior is giving it specific instructions and we can actually tie it to multiple actions if we want to. In this case, I just have a single action. So we still need to have a trigger here. And the trigger in most cases when we're using the Zapier Central Chrome extension 
is going to be when I message the bot. There's lots of other kinds of triggers available, but none of them are really relevant to this process. And as part of this, we need to give it a specific phrase or keyword that's going to trigger this. Now, I happen to work at an AI chatbot company before any of this stuff blew up with ChatGPT. One of the things I'd like to see in the future is not having to tie it to a specific keyword to more understand the intent of what we're trying to ask it. But this is a good start that we can just say something like ad channel. It's important that you don't use keywords that are reserved for other things with ChatGPT. So an example of that would be if you said something like find channel, it's going to try to go out and search the web for this channel, even if you meant find channel to trigger this. So just be careful if you're experiencing some errors. It might be because you're not being precise enough about the language that it needs to actually fire on this behavior. So let's summarize the different instructions I gave it. We told it that we need to create a YouTube channel record in Airtable, that it's going to be triggered from this Chrome extension. That's probably not necessary, but we did it just in case. And then as I was explaining, I got a lot of times where I was trying to fetch as a browser to capture information from the web. So I told it to try to suppress that. You don't need to actually fetch as a browser. We're going to give you all that information in what's called the initial context. So that means when I'm on my YouTube channel, when that channel is loaded, it doesn't have to go fetch by like clicking on a YouTube video or requesting that video. Instead, that data is just self-contained on the page. And that's what we call the initial context. Then I gave it some information about how we actually capture the channel URL. So we can get that from the URL itself. Then we're going to capture the handle. And then we told it we just don't want to store that at symbol. Instead, we're going to remove that. And then at the end, all we had to do was explain the different fields and how we want that mapped. Now, to be honest, you might not have to actually map the fields in that kind of detail. I found that it helped a little bit with the accuracy, so I just did it for all the fields, but it might be able to determine the field structure on its own. Zapier Central has this ability to test a behavior directly here, but that's not going to be very helpful because remember, this happens in context of us being on YouTube itself. So if we click test behavior, it's really not going to give us any relevant information. So I wouldn't test it here, just turn it on and we can do our testing directly in the browser itself. So let's go over to our YouTube channel and we've got our YouTube buddy up. Let's tell it to add a channel. That's that keyword that we need. And you can see that it's walked through the different steps that we provided on how it actually found that information. Now that's helpful if we're debugging this. I might tell it in the future to suppress or condense some of that information because we don't really need it to tell us everything it's doing in the background. So we've got this summary here. Let's go into Airtable and we can see it's created a record for our channel. So the channel is Dan Lehman. It was able to extract that handle from the URL, remove the at symbol for it. We've got a light description. This doesn't have everything with all of the links, but at least it's got some context here. It's got the current active subscribers. I put in this last checked. I know we can see the last updated date inside of Airtable natively, but in this case, we want to know when did we actually have our bot pull that information the most recent time, as opposed to if I'm the user and I add some additional notes, I don't want to actually grab that update. So this is just some additional context that we can provide. Here's the number of videos on the channel and then the name of the channel. So this works pretty well. One bug that I'm experiencing right now, at least with Airtable, is anytime, and I've created lots of different behaviors, anytime I'm trying to create a record, it then creates a blank, essentially a, a duplicate record, an extra record after we do the successful action. So I'm hoping that's something that they can change in the future so it doesn't do it, but we can just filter those out and delete the blank records. Okay, so what I did next is now that we have a YouTube channel, wouldn't it be great if we could actually save individual videos as well? So that's what we did with this create video record step. And our instructions for this one are going to be pretty similar. Now, one of the things I was trying to do was grab the transcript of the video. And there's probably a few different ways to slice this. So what I was trying to do, I've got some additional Chrome extensions for vidIQ up at the top to view some analytics there. But what we should be able to do is click and expand this. And then from here, there's a button to be able to show that transcript. So I was actually trying a few different methods. One, I was having it actually show in the DOM here because the Chrome extension isn't making a new request. It's grabbing the context of what's already on the screen, but that wasn't able to process. I was even going into the DOM and saying, okay, look for these keywords. And then here's what the timestamp looks like and grab that information. Still wasn't having it. Then I was experimenting with their web parser and some different ways that we could detect the unique URL for the transcript and plug that in. But there's so many bugs and errors right now that it's probably not worth doing that. Although we could probably hack it with some web hooks and do it in make if we really needed to. So I'm skipping that specific step for now. One of the nice things about using a large language model for this is that we're estimating the publish date because sometimes when you publish, 
you know, in this case, it's one thing that it has the direct publish date because this was just a couple of days ago. But sometimes it says something like eight months ago. And if we want to actually estimate when that was, it's a really good activity for our LLM rather than just to have a null value for that. So again, we can't actually test the behavior here. So we're going to do it directly in YouTube. And this time, let's use add video. Okay, so I'm not going to edit this part out. Of course, when I was doing this all day long earlier today, it was adding my video records just fine. And now when I do it for the recording, it looks like everything's fine. But what did it do instead? Did it create a video record for us? No, it created a channel record and tried to sandwich the data in there. Now, is this hallucination? I don't know. Is this calling the wrong behavior because the words add video is too similar to add channel? That's probably my guess more than a hallucination itself. So our keywords are too similar for what we're actually trying to trigger. So I'm going to go in and see if I can change this. This was actually happening to me earlier when I was trying to do a step for running a find command. And I said, find this. And it treated find as what Google search needed to be able to search for that information. So instead, I changed it to query and then it was able to function. So let's just test this out together. I'm going to change the keyword for this instead of add video. And let's try to be really specific. Create video record. So I'm going to update this trigger. All right, so let's try this again. Cross your fingers, create video record. And there we go. We can see it successfully created that record. So if you're running into issues here, I'd try to come up with the world's most specific keyword to trigger that just to make sure that it's all functioning. Now, here's the really cool part about this. Because we're using that channel handle, which is a unique identifier for YouTube, then what it's able to do is this is actually a linked record. So now I can click on this. And it can actually pull open information about the channel. And this is the beauty of a relational database with the AI capabilities is now we can take information about channels and videos and it's all interlinked together on the back end. So my next steps, if Zapier can resolve some of the bugs that persist, is I'd be able to research a number of videos, maybe different videos, but on similar topics. And then I want to store those transcripts in a vector database so we could pull that information and say, hey, I'm creating a video on this topic use these previous videos and identify some common themes or trends or how we're looking at that to provide some information and ideas for our new content. Now, that being said, there's lots of other tools that you can utilize to do the same thing. So don't feel like you have to be dependent on Zapier Central to fix some of these things. But bugs and all, Zapier Central is such a great tool. They've come so far in just a few months. So I'm really excited to see the future direction of where this is all going to go. If you have questions about building your own AI agents or automations for your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.